What was the idea to go on SES? Who dares wins? God knows. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think SAS done so much for me, though, because I'd given up on myself. Like, I was a mum. Like, just literally all everything... Everything was either for work, for the school, to provide for the boys, or just them. I didn't even look in the mirror before, like, I went. Like, I'd just given up on myself, didn't buy myself new clothes, didn't spend money on myself. Went into SAS, and, as I know, it just really kick-started something in me again. Yeah. Yeah. Cause That's I, what you need. I thought I was going to be the first out, and, like, when I looked around the room, I was like... Dwayne Chambers, professional athlete, Ashley, like ex-professional footballer, like all 20s, all other Olympians, mm -hmm. Fatima Whitbread, who was the oldest, but she's a yeah, she's machine. Fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like looking around, I'm going, I, I am the first person, I was here, I am the weak link, I knew that. But I ended up doing really, really well. And like, when I got, like, I knew I'd really injured myself. I didn't realise to what extent I'd injured myself. But to keep going, it made me realise that I'm well stronger than I thought. Like, well stronger, because I, I, we all had these water bottles and, like, one day I'd messed up and I hadn't filled it up, so it made me pour it over my head in the middle of the night. So I was, like, obsessed then about filling this water bottle up. So we had to jump out the helicopter and I was first out and as soon as I hit the water, I was like... <laughs> I thought, oh my God, I'm I'm dead. Like, that's the first thing I thought. Came up and I was like, oh my God, what have I done? Anyway, me and Jonathan got Jonathan um, swimming and he's not the strongest swimmer. So I was like, that I can't run, but I can swim. Like, so I was like, because my mum took me to all them swimming lessons, <laughs> getting me into Brugge. So I was swimming, got got on on the on the side and like got absolutely beasted but the whole time I couldn't breathe like literally couldn't breathe got home was really really ill went to the hospital and they were like how have you continued I had basically three broken ribs my lung was full of blood badly badly infected and I had a bleeding spleen so they were going to have to operate on me and I was like all for, <laughs> for the TV show I was like mm. but they were just amazed that I kept going do you think you're hard on yourself and forget what you've actually achieved through life and how strong you actually are. Yeah, yeah. Where does that come from? I don't know, you know. Just wanting to please and wanting to to do well and probably sometimes thinking, have I, like, messed things up? Like... I don't know. But as long as you're a good mother, you're winning. Exactly. In my eyes, everything else comes second nature. It doesn't really mean fuck all. Like myself, I chase fame because I thought that would fill all the gaps that's really missing in my life. And uh, I'm not even at the level I'm going to go to, but I understand now and I'm glad because when I was doing the podcast, it's always little small steps I've took. It's never been overnight success. So I don't really feel fuck all. No. But interview enough people to realise okay I'm chasing the wrong things because I used to chase listen I love nice things I still have nice watches nice cars I love it and I enjoy it but I sometimes in a minute I realise it doesn't really it doesn't fuel my fuel my fire to then this is that I wake up every day excited do you know what I mean there's always an element of always something missing and and the more I speak to people, the more I realise it's male and female who we all struggle because we're living in a very fast paced world we just want to do right and we sometimes feel confused by it. But like I say, all the stuff that you've done is amazing. You've, as long as you're a good mother, your kids are healthy. That's what I'm saying. There's people out there who are, just do their thing to be a good mother. They, for me, are the most successful people on the planet. That's like my everything now. It's just being the best mum that I can be for the boys, giving the best I, ha I possibly can for them. How was it fighting Pete Wicks? <laughs> I got chinned. <laughs> <laughs> see, if you put it on him, you'd have battled him, though. <laughs> <laughs> You're stronger than him. I'm blind and everything. He's proper Andy Pete, you know, like, I don't know, I just, <laughs> I've never had, like, 
I don't know, it was just like... He was crying, wasn't he? Yeah. And then he got himself <laughs> out and went and nearly killed himself, God. He's a proper Sam fella. Yeah, I like, I, I like everybody that was on that show, because Ashley Kane, who I know well, no. loved to bits what he's been through. He's a fucking animal, how he's fueled that, that pain and yeah. used it all against him to push on, because you don't know what he's battling every day, that kid. Like, he's just an animal. He's just fucking unbelievable. And it gives people inspiration, because a lot of people go the other side he's used that as a positive yeah massively and uh, it makes you question well my life ain't that bad do you yeah. know what I'm saying so who else Big Callum yeah yeah <laughs> it he's was a, a proper boss little group yeah, you know yeah yeah he was crying Pete wasn't he <laughs> <laughs> because Rudy Rhea, Rudy Rudy I know they're one yeah. of the instructors yeah um, they're animals, these guys. Oh. They're fucking animals. It's mad where the human mind can take you. The respect that I had, like, when I left, like, the things that, like, even, like, just before I had my armband taken off, we were walking up this mountain, and Foxy was like, fucking stop me crying. And he was like, I was, I had to put, we had, to, like, each other on our backs, walking up this mountain in the heat, and he went, I fucking did this in Afghanistan. He went, I was getting fucking shot at by the mule. Like, I thought, God, I think that you've got a bazzy, yeah, walking up this hill, and he was getting shot at. Like, so were you. Like, <laughs> 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 no. I'm saying, you said they've got on like a housing fire, no one. They loved that show. You had fucking so much to connect with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh saying he's not turned around and says, "Who's not? Yeah, fucking pussy." <laughs> is uh, how how is that show off camera though? Is it obviously it's still strict? Is it no real bullshit? Or is it fake? This is the most real thing you will ever ever like. Doesn't stop, but because it's only like forty five minutes an episode, they don't show. Like you don't sleep. They have you on an hour call, so every hour, Callum Best like that with a red light at you, going, come on, Jen, your turn. You're like, oh, get out your sleeping bag. You have to put all your wet clothes on, get out. Everything is 100% real. Like, real. Like, they don't stop at all or let up on you. And why has that gave you the kick up the ass to really get back in the zone again? Why that show? It took me to places mentally that... Do you know you were strong enough? Yeah, like, I'm scared of heights and, like made me realise that your body can, like, go to places that you just... Because I just always quit on myself, always. But because I didn't want to be the weakest link, I, like, and I was like, fucking hell, you can still do this. You, like, And it gave me respect for myself after it. That made me think, right, come on, you're going to sort yourself out. Do you think that's the first time since everything you've been through, you've really you've believed in yourself again? Yeah, and it's the first time I ever spoke about it in there and I don't know why because I wasn't going in there to speak about it mm -hmm. but literally just went Bleh. that's when you heal mm -hmm. you've bottled all that up for years the more you speak about it the more you laugh about it mm -hmm. because you think what the fuck was I thinking but there's so many people that can relate because once you speak about it it doesn't have the power you f f from you anymore no even though we think we're in control we've got kids we're married we've moved on still there and you'll still think about it next mm -hmm. editions that come it will always pop up but you can't that's your story you're not the only fucking mad bastard who's got a mad story to, to back it up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You've got to use it as fire. So when you hear everybody else speaking, you think, well, wait a minute. Because the thing about the Glaswegians and Liverpool, <clears throat> we're saying that Liverpool really fucking love to do podcasts, man. There's not many Glaswegians, but we always feel wary of speaking as if you're speaking out of school still, as if you're maybe mm. still in that life. But all we're trying to do is educate people. Don't make the same mistakes. Don't fucking do that. There's telltale signs. There's red flags here. Speak to your mum and dad or speak to your best friend. Get some information of how other people would react and see the story. So sometimes we can suffocate alone instead of, I need to speak to somebody here. And then when you mm -hmm. speak about it, then you see people relating to it. Like I say, these longer formats, people can relate and then the love you get and then you go, wait a minute, life is okay. Yeah. And the confidence grows again. Then you're back to the person you were at fucking 16, 17, 18. Then the opportunities rise. Then you're going to additions and you're getting with confidence. Yes, it was my story. It was fucked up. But you laugh about it and then you write a book and then you fucking put up possibly get a docu-series or certain things that happen. That Because the only person who fails is you, me. Mm -hmm. People say, oh, do you not worry about getting cancelled, the shit that you do. If I was to get all my platforms took away, my life would be better. Because it's fucking damaging. I'll figure out something again how to be successful. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. The people who cancel, the only person who gets cancelled is themselves. No matter what anybody says, no matter what people do, no matter your backstory. I interviewed about uh, 
murderers and people come in their pants and go, oh, it was amazing, they love these guys. These people have killed people. Yeah. But people give them fucking second, third, fourth, fifth chances because the, they respect the honesty. So when you're broken and admit you're broken and then speak about it, people can relate to it because everybody I believe has got a little bit of brokenness in them. Mm -hmm. But when they see strength from it, and that's when you then get the confidence to realise, I can speak about all this stuff. It literally did. I think that's what gave me this lease of life because it was almost like this shame of talking about it and I felt like everyone had disowned me if I spoke about it. And it was like a like a dirty secret like, and I yeah. could never ever speak about it. But I don't even know, like, and I, I tortured myself when I was in there. I was thinking, why have I spoke about that? And I just, but it, it's been the best thing. Yeah. Did you feel and like it's it was... a secret? And it's it's my life, and yeah. it happens, and it's how I've you know got to where I am now. It's my story.